I'm getting, getting accustomed to the faces of these two particular lambs. I heard you went back out to Amish country yesterday. Is that true? Did you see Annabelle and Clarabelle? The horses? The same ones? Or just other horses? Well, you'll have to take Peyton sometime. Uh, I want to tell you a secret today. Uh, when I began uh, being interested in doing illusions or sleight of hand or mantic tricks, uh, I began to find out that one of the best ways to find out or to learn or become a better magician or learn more tricks was to meet other magicians. Believe it or not, that's a lot about what church is about. It's about us all getting together and uh, learning our tricks from each other. Uh, figuring out, uh, you know, uh, talking to each other, how you doing, what's the Lord doing in your life, and figuring out new things and seeing what God has done in your life, He can, He may want to do in my life. So, but I, there was a, uh, there was a very good magician. He and his wife, Mr. and Miss Elmer Newman, they lived here in Decatur. He was known on stages all around the world as a new beanie. And uh, he invited me and a few of my friends over to his house, he and his wife, and they would just spend hours teaching us how to do magic tricks. Uh, Mr. Newman got a little aggravated at me one time, however, because whatever I have done, I've always enjoyed sharing it with others. That means I don't always just you know, do a magic trick and then tell people, show people what the secret is or how it's done, but I've always been interested in turning other people into magicians or to let people know that it's just a trick Anybody can do it. They don't have any special powers. Let me show you something in turn. So uh, I think Mr. Newman, who's gone, he's gone on now. He's no longer living. But I don't think he got too mad at me. And I was able to explain to him. I said, look, I, when I'm sharing a trick, it's not so that somebody will just know the secret. But it's so that they'll know how to do it and make somebody else happy. I just believe we need more magicians in the same way that I believe we need more Christians. Now, look here at my hand. I'm going to show you my hand. I'm just going to move it up and down just a little bit because that's the way that I was taught how to do this trick. And then the card appears right there. Now it just looks like it appears because it uses a, a, a sleight of hand technique called palming. Now that's the palm of your hand. And if you hold a card, if you hide a card in your hand, and that's where I had that card hidden a while ago, I had it in my pocket. So I could talk to you and wiggle my fingers like this to give the impression that my hands were empty. And then while I was talking to you a little bit more and you weren't really paying attention, I put my hand back in my pocket. I palmed the card there and I talked to you for a while like that. And there's the card right there, see it? But you have to learn how to clip it like that with your fingers. It's not just like holding a card. Because when I turn my hand over here like this and then turn it up, I have to flip it over to the back of my hand. And there it's clipped on the back of my hand, just like that. That's called back palm. I have no idea who thought of calling it that. That's what all the to call it, back palm. So I have it there. And then I just flip it over like that, see? Have it on the back of my hand, and then I squeeze it to the back of my hand and turn my hand over. And there it is. And the reason I move my hand a little bit, you can see the card there, can't you? Can you see that paper? The edges of the card. Now, if I move it up and down, you certainly can't see it. Then I make it as if to appear. So I have to put the card there before I can make it appear to appear. I've been talking with you about having Jesus in your heart. And, uh, I bought this uh, a number of years ago. It's called a mystery box. Well, if you paint stars on something and call it a mystery box, that kind of does away with part of the mystery right there, doesn't it? But I always display it open. It's just like a little drawer, like you had a drawer in your dresser. And I always show it empty. And... Uh, Jesus lives inside of my life by faith. I'm going to close this now. Watch that. I'm going to close the door. Did you see that happen? Now watch. Still nothing there. <coughs> now, that's the way the rabbit in the hat works and the tiger in the cage. You have to put the tiger in there. You have to put the rabbit in there and hide it so nobody can see it first. So I had this, this was in there all the time. It just looked like it was empty. But now it's really there. And what I want to tell you is it's not a secret. 
is that we have to invite Jesus to come into our heart. You have to put him in there before he can say, well, Jesus lives in my heart. You have to invite him in. It's like he's knocking on a door and you say, come in. You shouldn't do that at home. You know that. If you hear somebody, I like to do that to your dogs, Winston and Roxy. I like to knock on something and say, come in. What do they do? They go, woo. They are so dumb. <laughs> they are so, you know, your dogs are so dumb. Now, I love Winston and Roxy. But we have to have, you got to put it in or it can come out. Let me tell you something about your life. You know what's going to come out of your life? You know when things are bad and things are good, the things that are going to come out of your life are the things you put into your life. So if you put good things in your life by studying and learning and reading and, and being with other people, I believe that's something that Christians learn that everybody should learn. Uh, if you put good words and good thoughts and good deeds and all kinds of good things, if you make a practice of every day putting good things into your life, then every once in a while that stuff will get out. And you know what? The people who know you, the people who are around you, the people whom you meet, your friends and your family, they'll really love you. And they say the good things coming out of your life. I'm talking about being gracious and kind and gentle and being thankful and being polite and being respectful. All of those things are the good things. Being truthful and honest, having integrity, to learn what integrity means. But the only things that will ever come out of your life are the things that you hide away. You know, if you watch right now, there's still, there's lots, do you have squirrels at your house? Squirrels running around? They're going around, they're looking for acorns and nuts and peanuts and pieces of food. They're, and they're taking it and they're hiding it away in the tree where they live. Because pretty soon it's going to get cold and there's going to be snow on the ground and the weather's going to get bad. And they can't say, the, the daddy squirrel doesn't say, honey, I'm going down to the squirrel store to get some squirrel food. No, they have stored away all of their food. They've hidden things away. And when it's, they say, it's cold outside. I said, that's all right. We worked all summer and all fall. And we have a lot of things we hid away. So every day of my life, I'm always looking. When I meet someone, when I'm in a class, when I'm in a study or uh, when I'm at work, when I'm going about, I'm listening to the radio, I'm watching television, reading a book, reading a magazine, I'm looking for good things to put inside of me. Because I know that sooner or later, all those good things come out. Now, if all I do is put mean, grumpy, bad things and sour things, and if, that's all, if that's all I'm storing away, and if I hit my thumb with a hammer, guess what comes out? Well, never mind. Never mind what comes out. Well, you think about that, okay? Think about it every day. Just put lots of... It's just like saying trick or treat and have people and things. Everybody around you is giving away things. And you can find out where you go that there's always good things that God has available to us. It's like a smorgasbord. Let's all spell that together. Let's do that another time, all right? All right, God bless you both. Brother Dan, if you continue to lead us.